So the school year has a chaotic start at Columbia University. Anti-Israeli protesters chanting for Hamas to resist until victory. Vandalizing statues on campus and vowing to continue the unrest. Watch. We have been very clear that this will not stop until Colombia has divested from its complicity in Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people. I'm a visible Jew. I'm Orthodox. I wear a Star of David around my neck. I know that's putting a target on my back. And coming to terms with that reality is actually quite frightening. And there she is. Columbia student shows Shana and Eliana and Ari join us now on set. So uh, I guess I'll start with you first, ladies. You're freshmen. You had the opportunity to choose another school, but y'all decided to stay here. Why? I'll let Eliana take that one. So thank you for having us, first of all. Pleasure. I honestly, Barnard has been my dream school. Barnard College of Columbia University was my dream school for as long as I can remember. And I honestly don't find it fair for these students to take away the education that I've dreamed of my entire life and for me to just back down and go somewhere else simply because I'm Jewish and simply because I'm a Zionist. Mm. And what about you? Well, like Eliana, I also always wanted to go to Barnard. Um, it's a women's college, and I'm also in a dual degree program with the Jewish Theological Seminary, so I'm able to pursue a couple of my diverse interests simultaneously. Um, but believe me when I say that I was disheartened and appalled to see the events that transpired mm -hmm. last year. So, Ari, it's a little bit different for you. Uh, you're a PhD, uh, PhD student. You can't just switch programs like that. Uh, why did you decide to stay at Columbia? Yeah, it, it was uh, definitely something that I thought about. A good friend of mine actually sw uh, switched schools last year, so I miss her a lot. But for me, thank God, I, I'm in the STEM program. Um, I work sort of near at the back of campus, so I do go out and fight when it's necessary. But when I need to buckle down and work, I can get away from it all and buckle down and work. But that's not a luxury everyone has. Eliana, um, tell me about the vibe on campus right now. Do you feel like there's been any steps put into place to keep you safe? Absolutely not. First of all, I just want to mention, the day before I moved in, I published an article in my local Jewish newspaper about my hesitations going to Barnard as an openly Jewish and Zionist student. Mm -hmm. And... I expected nobody outside of my community to read it, honestly, and only a few hours later, it was posted on an anonymous Instagram account that's run by um, encampment leaders, mm -hmm. and the hate comments were awful, disgusting, and those comments also bled into our group chat mm -hmm. of my fellow classmates that I hadn't even met yet. We moved in the following day, mm -hmm. and... They were asking me how I could even show my face on campus, telling me that it's embarrassing for me to even be there. I don't feel safe on campus even now that I'm here. Um, from my room, I can hear the protests quite clearly. Mm -hmm. I'm on the second floor facing Broadway. Um, walking through campus, I notice flyers being handed out to visibly Jewish students, basically flyers telling them that they're complicit in genocide. Um, and I, I just feel like there's a target on my back simply for being Jewish. Yeah. So, Shoshana, we've been following this, and this is some of the experiences that we've been able to document at the university. So, there's been Jewish students that are chased out of their dorm. They've been spat on, forced to hide symbols of Judaism. They've been excluded from the student life groups. They've been pinned against walls. Anti-Semitic slurs and tropes has um, been shouted at other Jewish students. When it comes to the university, has there been some commitment to keep you safe on campus or have you walked the class by campus officers or anything like that? Um, the short answer is no. The administration has made a commitment to ensuring the safety of Jewish students on campus. We're constantly receiving emails from Barnard and Columbia saying they want to mend fences. With the words. Yes. Mm -hmm. But as much as I appreciate those cliche sentiments, it's all talk and no action. Mm. Columbia has an anti-Semitism task force that released a pretty damning report of anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic incidents that happened on campus this past year. And while that was disseminated to the entire university, I have not seen tangible examples mm -hmm. of the administration taking note of that. And truly, it's gross negligence. And to that point, Ari, what do you want the university to do right now? Thanks for that question. Um, I want the university to continue what they've been doing in terms of making sure that the protesters stay off campus. 
I'd like them to come out really strongly in favor of just basic principles of interpersonal decency. I mean, look, when you have anti-Semitism lurking in the shadows and you deny it instead of addressing it, that sends a pretty clear message about everything else that you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and we're not just talking about students. You got professors that have openly uh, had anti-Semitic uh, chants within the classroom, um, and now they're still tenured at the university. Um, thank you all so much for joining me this morning. I hope things get, get better on campus. We appreciate thank you. you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.